In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. So we continue to begin our journey into ordinary time. This is the 11th Sunday, 11th week rather, of ordinal time. We take a moment now to ask God to open our hearts and allow us to rest in his mercy and compassion. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas. And since without you, mortal frailty can do nothing, Grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your risen Son, who lives and reigns with you, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, holy and mighty God, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, are justice and truth. Your works, O Lord, are justice and truth. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart, in the company of the upright, in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Your works, O Lord, are justice and truth. Full of honor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has gained renown by his wonderful deeds. The Lord is gracious and merciful. Your works, O Lord, are justice and truth. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever, to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. Your works, O Lord, are justice and truth. Children. And in 
Yesterday, Jesus was giving advice to the disciples on how to not imitate, not be like the scribes and the Pharisees, and well, actually anybody who who makes sure that everybody can see that they are giving alms, that they are praying, that they are uh, fasting, because he says they have received their reward already by doing that. Everybody, you know, they they're noticed, which is really why they were doing it in the first place. In other words. All these things, all this piety that he's talking about has to do with interior disposition. And so this continues then with a further insight of the whole idea of what is, what is the way to pray? How do you pray? Now it's interesting because uh, Luke's version of the Our Father, I mean this prayer is so familiar that when you hear you know, Matthew's version or Luke's version, you'll hear, oh, that's not quite how we say it on Sundays. Or whenever you pray the rosary or whenever you do your own private prayer. Um, so the Our Father is something that's so familiar to us that we almost treat it as, as the way Jesus says at the beginning of this gospel passage, you know, don't be like the Gentiles, just babbling away. Well, sometimes that's what we do with the Our Father, we babble away. And we forget how uh, intensely um, dangerous, actually, the prayer is because of what it actually calls us to. And so it's, it's really quite a... A precarious thing to not uh, really think of what you're saying. Now, this is good advice, I think, at any time. Um, it's a good advice to, to think before you speak. I think it's a terrible thing when people say, you know, I'm just thinking out loud. Well, don't, don't. <laughs> you know, don't think out loud. Think it through first and then speak. Because you can get yourself in a lot of trouble if you just babble. And so, um, in this case, with prayer, uh, Matthew's version of the Our Father is, is very typically Matthew. Um, Matthew's got a thing for the number seven. It's, uh, this just happens to be his thing. It's, it was not uncommon among uh, Jewish uh, uh, scholars to be into numbers a little bit, but number seven is really important to Matthew. If you recall in his genealogy, which is you know kind of unique to his gospel at the beginning, uh, when he goes through uh, Jesus' genealogy to tie him back to uh, David, King David, there are three groups of seven. Uh, the Beatitudes, the original Beatitudes that would have been found in Matthew's Gospel without any additions, would have been seven. And so today, in the Our Father, there are seven petitions, is really what it is. But as I said, this prayer is not a prayer that's meant to be babbled away. It's meant to be, it's meant to really sort of highlight what kind of interior disposition that Jesus was talking about when he did talk about how you should give alms, how you should pray, how, sh how you should fast. And so, right off the bat, I mean, think about this, right at the very start of the prayer, our Father, not my Father, our Father. So, what is that saying? Well, right off the bat, it's saying he is everyone's Father. 
And so he is the father to all peoples, whether they are believers or not, whether they are uh, of the same faith or not, he is our father. In other words, the imperative is that we have to see everybody as one of his children, our father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed, ha holy is your name. This is, we don't make God's name holy by saying that. We, again, you see, it's, the prayer is there to help us realign our interior disposition. We're the ones who are supposed to become aligned to that notion that God is, God's name is holy. Your kingdom come. Well, your kingdom, your reign. In other words, what you, the values that you want us to live by, may they prevail in our lives, God. <laughs> That's a, that all by itself, just that one line. You could spend the rest of your life saying, that's my life's work, is to make God's values rule my heart, rule my life, and not the values that sort of get me what I want. Your, king, your will be done, again, same thing, on earth as it is in heaven, that means everywhere, especially in my heart. Give us this day our daily bread. Interesting. Not my daily bread. A couple of things are being said there. For one thing, uh, help me not worry about tomorrow. Help me not be a consumer. Help me not worry about what I don't have tomorrow that I have to sort of get. But just give me what I need to sustain myself today. But not just me. Give us this day our daily bread. So if there's somebody else who doesn't have daily bread, that is an impact on us because he is our Father. Give us this day our daily bread. So there's the imperative to sort of notice the needs of other people as well. And forgive us our debts, yes, forgive us our debts. That's something we often, you know, think that we've done enough when we say to God, I recognize that I'm a sinner and I, I have failed, so forgive me, God, as we forgive those who trespass against us, or as he puts it, as we also have forgiven our debtors. There's a contract. So that's another really important thing. Do we say that all that lightly? God, I want you to treat me the way, you, I, the way I treat others. So, <laughs> and that's really what Matthew's saying. Jesus says, if you forgive others their trespasses, if you, if you, for if you forgive others their trespasses, your Heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither do, don't expect God to forgive you. Now, is God all merciful? Of course God is all merciful. But I guess it's a question of justice, isn't it? I mean, really what he's saying is, do you think you ought to expect God to forgive you when you will not forgive others? In other words, let's look at it another way. And this makes it actually easier to forgive others, especially those who have hurt you very badly. If, you've been, if you have been hurt really badly by somebody else, consider the great debt that has been forgiven you, the great debt that you have. I and mean, that's really what the cross is all about. So each of us needs to be able to do that and look at the cross and say, there's no reason for me to get this huge gift of salvation. There's no reason. It is freely given. I didn't earn it. And so if God is willing to do that for me, if he's willing to look on my lowliness, my sinfulness, and say, nevertheless, I love you and I offer you this gift, well, ought we not do the same? for those who've hurt us really much, much less than, we've, than we have behaved badly ourselves in our whole lives. So that's quite the thing. Forgive us our sins, our debts, as we forgive those who are debtors to us. So there's the contract. So you see, there, the Our Father, how we should pray, according to Jesus. Uh, not just something to babble, not just something to rhyme off, but something really rather serious. So, I would propose to you that today is a good day to pray the Our Father. And if you stop at the first line, just with Our Father, and you stop there, and just consider what the implication is, just of that one line. Our Father. God is our Father. He's my Father, your Father, Father to all. Father to even people that we don't like. Father to people that we don't agree with. Well, 
See, there's so much that we can do with this prayer. But the bottom line is, is it's calling us to an interior disposition, not just some formula that we're asked to repeat, not to babble, as the Gentiles do, according to Matthew, not to just hoping God will hear us if we say it loud enough and fast enough, but instead, something that's designed to change us. Because, here's the thing, Matthew does say, or has Jesus say, do not be like those Gentiles who babble away, for your Father knows what you need even before you ask Him. There is the real key. That's what prayer is supposed to be all about. Of course God knows our needs. What we're supposed to do, and our Father is supposed to help us to do that, is to help us to recognize our own needs, our real needs, and our own dependence upon God. That's what real, authentic prayer is all about. Not to change God's mind, because God doesn't change. God is God. God knows what we need, and God gives us what we need. But instead, it's to sort of help us align ourselves to what our true needs are, not the ones we imagine, not the ones we think are so important, but our true needs, and to recognize that we are dependent upon God for these things, and then to wait for God to give us what we truly need with hope and not despair. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, through the vine of your human hands, and will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to be pleased with us in the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquities, cleanse me of all my sins. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Amen. O God, when the offerings presented here provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament, grant we pray that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body nor in spirit. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is to be right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Father most holy, through your, your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, 
so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread, and drink this cup. We proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Albert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Saint Bernadette, Lord, Saint Boniface, and with all the saints who please you throughout the ages, that we too may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you for your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, and thoughtfully as we can, let us, let us pray the words that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and gracious and grand peace in our days. And by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who sent your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. You who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit through death gave life to the world, free me from this. Your most holy body and blood from all my sins and from every evil, keep me always faithful to your commandments and never let me be from you. Lord Jesus Christ, 
sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. This reception of your Holy Communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.